path of action. The path of action is the trajectory of a moving object. Here's some common examples found in basic animation exercises. The parabolic arc of a bouncing ball, the circular arc of a brick tipping over, and the complex irregular path of action of a falling leaf. The path of action in this brick drop exercise looks complicated, but it can be broken up into circular arcs and parabolic arcs. Now, it's important to remember that character animation follows the same basic rules as the motion of simple objects. Topics such as the path of action for jumping characters are discussed in future videos. Path of action is not explicitly one of the principles of animation, but Thomas and Johnston do include arcs in their list. They write, one of the major problems for the in-betweeners is that is, it is much more difficult to make a drawing on an arc. Drawings made as straight in-betweens completely kill the essence of the action. Now, while motion along a straight line is certainly possible, as when, say, a ball is falling straight downward, the more common and more interesting situation is motion that follows an arc. There are two similar terms used in animation that you should not confuse, namely line of action and path of action. Individual drawings have a line of action, which indicates the visual flow of action in that single drawing. The path of action indicates the trajectory for a sequence of drawings in an animation. The path of action is usually associated with the primary motion, such as the trajectory in a jump. But we can also consider paths of action for secondary motion, such as the motion of a character's hand, arm, foot, etc. When gravity is the only force, the path of action is a parabolic arc. For example, the paths of action of a bouncing ball and a stream of water are parabolic arcs. Of course, when I say gravity, I'm referring to motion on Earth, not the orbits of planets or other such motion that occurs in astronomy. Circular arcs are common since motion is often found around a fixed pivot, such as a joint. Two common types of motion on circular arcs are tipping and swinging. In both cases, the path of action is a circular arc, but the timing and spacing is very different for these two types of motion. A spiral arc is a circular arc, but with a radius that's either increasing, spiral out, or decreasing, spiral in. Complex motion has an irregular path of action. It's challenging to animate believably since the timing and spacing need to be consistent with the path of action. The laws of motion, in particular the law of acceleration, help animators in creating believable complex motion. These laws of motion are discussed in detail in future videos. Finally, in computer animation, the motion of an object is often manipulated by drawing a motion curve in the graph editor. This motion curve indicates the position, or more precisely, the coordinates, for an object on different frames. It's important to understand that the motion curve in the graph editor is not the path of action. For example, a ball that is falling straight downward has a path of action that is a straight line but the motion curve in the graph editor is not a straight line. In fact, the motion curve in this case happens to be a parabolic arc. So in summary, the path of action is the trajectory traced out by a moving object or character. The line of action indicates the visual flow of a drawing. 
moving, falling objects often have a parabolic arc as a path of action. Circular arcs are another common path of action, for example, swinging or tipping motion. And the path of action is not the same as the motion curve in the graph editor. In the next few videos, we'll look at these various types of paths of action in more detail. See you then.